everyone, Alexa Dunn here, and today I am going to be reviewing the Free Write Traveler. This is a distraction-free word processing tool. It is from the company Astro House, who several years ago crowdfunded the Free Write, which is the original version of a very similar tool. This is the travel version. It's very similar to an Alpha Smart, which I believe they don't make anymore. So if you're looking for that kind of word processing, distraction-free writing tool, this might fit the bill. Asterisk. That said, we are going to talk a bit about the intended audience for this, price, and so on. And up front, a disclaimer, I was sent the Freewrite Traveler for review consideration by Astro House, so I did receive this for free, but I am otherwise not being compensated in any way. I have not received sponsorship for this video, and thus this review is my own personal opinion about how I have found this, who I think it might be good for, and kind of the pros and cons that you should consider if you're thinking about buying something like this. I will put briefly on the screen kind of pictures so you can compare the free write original versus this free write traveler so you can kind of see like they're both actually technically portable but the free write original is more like it's meant to be like a typewriter that's part of the allure and the style and the function of it and the free write traveler is more of like a laptop replacement if that laptop of course were a distraction free tool that didn't have the regular internet but does wirelessly connect to sync all of your writing. The Free Write Traveler is currently $429, and then that Free Write Original is $549, so you can kind of get a sense of the price difference there. And currently, Free Write does have a one month free trial for all of their products where you pay the shipping for the device, you can try it for a month, and then you would be charged for the cost of the item or you would return it. So that is a way to try this out relatively risk-free. See if you like it because I do consider this an investment because of the higher price point. So the Free Write Traveler is 11 inches long, five inches wide, so to speak, closed. It is 1.6 pounds to give you kind of a sense of the kind of portability of it. When I was getting it, my number one thought was, how is this actually gonna feel in my hands? How small, you see that very thin profile. How is this going to feel? How is it literally going to travel? This is what it looks like inside, and I'll show you close-ups as I'm talking about the features. The Freewrite uses e-ink, so very similar to any newer generation Kindles, so you'll kind of have an idea of what it's going to look like. It does connect wirelessly, it has Wi-Fi. You can keep it off if you prefer. When you have it on, it just means that it's wirelessly syncing to a backup, and it wirelessly syncs to a backup. Postbox is the account that you need to have. You just create an account when you buy your Freewrite device, but you can go into your Postbox and set it up to auto-sync to the service of your choice. Dropbox and Google Drive were two of the options. I just synced it right to my Google Drive. It was super easy and as I type and work on documents, it legit syncs super fast. I would type a line and go into the Google Doc and it was already there. In addition to wireless, you can directly connect this to your computer and you're gonna do that to charge it, though it has a very long battery life. The website says one month of battery life. I'm assuming that's with regular use. I haven't used it every single day. I've used it a couple times since I got it and it still has full battery life and it's been more like six weeks for me. I'm really impressed with the battery life. It's one of my favorite things about it because I know that I would just be able to throw it in my bag over multiple writing trips and not worry about it. You are able to push any of the three folder buttons and that just kind of creates spaces for your writing. Creating a new document, I've been doing it by scene, you can do it by chapter or just by writing session, is super super easy. You either press the new key or you press both of these new keys down at the same time and that all auto syncs with the backup. It's very very easy and straightforward. So I know that folder A is the folder I'm using for my current YA whip and say I start an adult whip, I would use folder B and set up the files there. And lastly, probably my favorite part about it, 
I'm really particular about keyboards, and this is a scissor switch keyboard. It has a nice low profile. They're like tactile and a little bit clicky, but not too much, but they're also not too soft. It's an in-between from a mechanical keyboard and kind of the super soft touch quiets that you find on some laptops that I personally find aren't quite clicky enough for me, but these are nice and tactile. And I'm about to kind of go into the things that I really like about it, so we might as well start here. I really like the keyboard and the typing experience. If that is something that you are also a little bit specific about, like I have a very tactile keyboard for my regular desktop top. When I get a laptop that doesn't have those kinds of keys, it's kind of a bummer. I've mostly had a good run, but if you've ever had a laptop where the keys, I mean, maybe Clicky's bad for you, but where they were like too soft, I need some give and pushback from my keys. It's something about the typing experience that I really, really like. It actually enables me to type more seamlessly, and it, for me, contributes to the distraction-free writing aspect of it. These fall nicely in the middle. You have, like, good give. They come back to you, but nothing too much too crazy. It's not overly clicky. You're not going to, like, have that bad ASMR sound from the keys, as some keyboards have. I like the space. Like, my fingers fit nicely on the keys. I love the nice, wide, big space bar. I'm an aggressive space pusher with my thumb. I'm like, I really depress on the keys. And so I found the actual typing experience I really liked it. I was worried with the profile of this, would it be a little too short? Would it not be big enough? But they really nailed it going 11 inches long. It's just enough. It feels like a full keyboard without this being huge and clunky. And there's enough height on the keys as well. I've definitely had experiences with like minis, like little computers, micro keyboards to conserve space. And I don't enjoy them because the keys are way too cramped. But this struck a perfect balance for me personally felt really comfortable with my hands. And then the next thing that I really liked really is the size and the portability. The Traveler appealed to me in particular because personally I have a desktop at home and this is kind of a pie in the sky thing of course because currently we're really not leaving our homes let alone to write. But when we are able to do that I love to go to coffee shops to write but I had been hauling my old gaming laptop with me to coffee shops and it's heavy. I would have to take an extra backpack with me in addition to my Honestly, I've got a giant ass purse. I'm that kind of person. And this will fit beautifully into my giant ass purse without weighing down that giant ass purse. So this like size and portability wise, 1.6 pounds, but like that sounds like a lot, but it really, it's it's got a good weight to it. I'm very happy with that aspect of this. And I do plan on purchasing like a, a sleeve to protect it when I do start throwing it into a bag. For now, it's not leaving my house, so it's fine as is. And as I already kind of mentioned, the wireless syncing really works well. It is immediate. If you turn on the wireless, if you have it on while you are working, it is auto syncing almost seamlessly. What I really liked about this is I was able to use this during a sprint. And when the sprint was over, I could open it up in the Google Doc or even have it open and like see the words magically appear and immediately do kind of a pass read over it. I don't have a document open now that it has like all the writing. You're getting eight to like 12 lines on this screen at a time, which means you can read a little bit back from what you've done, but you're not going to be able to read the whole scene. So I liked that it was quickly syncing so that I could just go and read over. Plus, I just love that it's going into my Google Docs, which was already a space that I was using heavily to archive writing when I would spontaneously need to write something. I, was, I write it on my phone a lot of the time, so I already have whips that go into my Google Docs, and so this is just seamlessly integrating with something that's already part of my writing process. I didn't notice anything funky with formatting either, which is nice. Sometimes it's like, ooh, is this gonna like insert issues? But I had zero problems copying it over from Google Docs to Scrivener. Everything imported seamlessly and looked good. 
And just generally speaking, I like the idea of distraction-free writing. It was definitely something I wanted to try out with a tool like this because I have found that the apps that are available don't kind of vibe with what I want. I don't actually, if I'm on my desktop or laptop, I don't actually want to turn off the internet because I'm not someone who like has to cold turkey myself in order to get work done. I have liked distraction-free writing hacks like the Comic Sans hack, which I still recommend, but since those kinds of apps that turn off your internet, make it so you can't go into other documents, don't specifically appeal to me. This was nice because I like the idea of it as a dedicated tool. It's like I pick up this thing and it's just for writing. This particular like avenue works for me personally as a writer. So it's really just kind of about what you think is going to work for you and like the standaloneness of a tool like this, of it being a word processor with nice keys and like the, the like the screen where like I could read a little but not get overly distracted by my own writing. This definitely worked out for me. Now onto things that I didn't like as much, which Really, it's more things of note that are definitely facets or limitations of this, so you are aware. Because with anything like this, it's gonna be like, is this tool right for me and how I write and what's gonna bug me with writing? So the number one thing of note with this, now you can page up and page down. So if you have a longer document in here and you wanna kinda go up and read back, you definitely can. What you can't do as easily because it's meant to be a distraction-free writing tool so that you have momentum, you're not going to be able to go back, like space back word for word to swap out a word, to fix a typo. You would have to backspace to delete what you wrote to go back. Let's say like eight words back, you realize you misspelled something. It's just not going to be efficient to delete, 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 to go back to fix it to type. So you do have to toss that kind of perfectionism out, which frankly can be a good thing. I do tend to typo on certain words. I have a problem with the when I'm typing really, really fast. I type it T-E-H and I always have to correct those. And so now when I'm using this, I'm correcting them in the Google Doc and that's why I am doing a pass after I do a sprint with the free write. So in a good sense, it means you, you literally can't stop writing. You have to push forward. But if you are more like you want to stop every couple lines or sentences and like key back and like noodle on a word. This isn't easily going to enable you to do that. The other thing that I've noticed that is just of note and hey, free rate or someone more versed in this so far, I couldn't find my instruction manual after a few weeks and so maybe it's in there, but I couldn't figure out a way to open up old documents. So I'm in folder one and this is the second scene I, file I created while I was sprinting and I can't figure out how to like go through and go to an older file. So I just randomly tried something and it totally worked. So I'm actually wrong. And I just have to learn more about how to use this. I was like, I wonder if I push down the folder key for a couple of seconds, if it'll open up a directory. And it did. That's going to go on the pros list. That is actually really, really helpful. <laughs> And it shows you a preview of what it is. So that actually is very useful. You can go back and like see what's in your folders and access old files. Um, I'm leaving this in unedited because I honestly think it's funny. So to that end, I guess it's, it's not really a con, it's just a note. The basics of this, which is turning it on, creating a file and typing, super, super easy, super entry level. You don't have to think too hard about it, but clearly there are a couple functions. There are things that this does that I still need to figure out. Like I've seen other writers post pictures and they have cool screensavers and I still have to figure out how to get a cool screensaver onto this thing. So there's definitely still a lot to figure out with this free write. So the other really important thing to take into consideration, this is purely a drafting tool. As I kind of worked with it and got a feel for it and kind of that thing where you're not going to be going word for word to make nitpicky changes, unless there's just something about this I don't know how to use which is now a distinctly possibility, it's a drafting tool. It's really not going to be an editing tool. So if you're getting an edit letter from your editor, you're doing a pass on your manuscript, this is not going to be a replacement for Microsoft Word or Scrivener. It's purely a drafting, a word processing tool, which is what it's meant to be, to get the words on the page into those other programs where you're going to be doing your combing through, your revision, your editing work. 
So this does mean that as a writer, you're gonna have your drafting phase and this is gonna be your portable drafting tool, but then you go into a revision phase, like if I'm working on edits with my editor and I still want to go to a coffee shop to work on that, still gonna have to take a laptop that has Scrivener on it to do that work. And lastly, the thing that I think is the most important consideration, which kind of brings us into, should you buy this? Do you need this? That is something that I really take into consideration as like a, oh, this is really great, but you have to consider this and it's the cost. I mean, it was in the beginning of the video, like this is $429 and immediately you know what kind of device this is. This is definitely more on kind of the luxury tool side. It's targeted to people who like kind of attractive, like you know, it's got the rounded edges. A lot of really good designmanship has gone into this. I mean, the, the, the wonderful keyboard, I really do like it. This is definitely targeted to the same demographic that is going to like luxury products, luxury functional products like Apple, and it is priced accordingly. Thus, the number one consideration of the question, do you need it and should you buy it, is always going to have to measure functionality of it as a tool and your process as a writer and your needs versus the cost. This is why for me, Traveler is such an attractive product. The Freerate original is also really nice, but at 549, it edges really, really close to expensive for someone like me. 429 is still plenty of money, but pricing wise, it edges a little closer to if you're in the market for a small laptop, a cheap, a lower end laptop just for writing. This would kind of compete in that space price point wise, and it wins on portability for sure. As I mentioned, I have tried little mini laptops. It was actually a long time ago before I ever wrote a novel where I was like, I'm gonna buy a mini laptop so that I'm a writer and I can take it to cafes. And I hated the ergonomics of it so much. I really hated the spacing of the keys. Yeah, it was light and portable, but I didn't enjoy using it. And this is a completely different story here. This is filling that functionality, but with product design that actually works for me. And since I have been using a clunky old gaming laptop, I adore my gaming laptop, but gaming laptops are huge and they're heavy and it's a bit more of a pain to lug it around. This functionally is a good product for a writer like me. 429, still definitely an investment that takes serious consideration but an investment that does make sense to me at this point in my career as a professional writer. That's the thing, I do think this is ideal for professional writers, people who are writing full-time or just writing very seriously, I mean, I have a day job, but who need a word processing tool that is portable, that is light, that's gonna enable them to get a lot of work done. And indeed, I have been delighted to see writers like Kirsten White and Zoraida Cordova posting about their travelers it kind of made me go, oh, I have the same thing as these authors that I really, really like. And I've seen a couple other authors on my feed wondering if they should put this on their wish list for Christmas. I will say, if you have a gift fairy in your life who is willing to drop the coin on this, do it. I, there's a reason I put it in my gift guide and it was in the four baller section, because if you have a baller in your life, get them to buy you a free rights because it's a lovely little product. But I am not gonna be the person to sit here and tell you that if you are cash strapped, if you're thrifty, if you're even vaguely unsure that you would actually really use this, first of all, they do have the free trial for anyone who wants to see if they want to use this. But if this represents a large cost for you, something that would put you in a tricky position or take away something else in your life, I do, I'm do. i not gonna advise that you need this if you don't have the money. I am also literally the person who doesn't buy Macs or Apple products because I find them overpriced relative to, their, to what they are. I'm very happy with my Google products. That's just me personally. So meaning practically speaking as an incredibly thrifty person, I am the last person is gonna tell you that you should throw caution to the wind and throw a bunch of money at this. But if you have the money, and you think that this is gonna fit your writing process, I do recommend it. I'm really excited. I mean, I'm excited for quarantine to end for so many reasons. I was actually delighted. I thought my favorite coffee shop had closed, but they actually did renovations and I'm, I'm hoping they continue to survive the pandemic because they're right down the street and my favorite place to write and I can't wait to slide into my favorite booth. 
with my free write when this is all over and get some drafting done. Let me know down below in the comments any questions you have about the free write traveler or if you are a smarter person than me and you have one of these and you know how to do stuff that I don't know how to do, feel free to correct me, to school me down below. I am really excited to use this more. I like barely nanoed what words I did get in. I did get in on the free write traveler, but I have a lot of drafting ahead of me. I need to finish my next YA thriller. And I think the free write is really going to come in handy and just like vaccines, coffee shops, like I cannot wait to just go out in the world and actually use a portable <laughs> word processing device. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. I post new videos two to three times a week. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and happy writing.